Allah Hi, I'm Mashina Ramadan from Jerusalem. Don't push me. Don't push me. Don't push me. Okay, go on. Don't push me. Okay, go. Hi, this is Iman Bilbasi from Gaza. Hi, I'm Ala Khayyu from Jerusalem. Hi, I'm Farah Abu Qasim living in Gaza. This is Diana Zir from Ramallah. My name is Nagam Mhanna. I live in Gaza. أعزائي المستمعين نقدم لكم نشرة الأخبار. I am Yara Amla. I'm living in Ramallah. So today I'm in Hebron at uh, Bab Zawi and I'm going towards the old city of Hebron now. Uh, I'm also supposed to meet my friend Micha, who's uh, he's an ex-Israeli soldier from Breaking the Silence, and uh, he's actually one of the co-founders of it. Hi. Hi, Biut Arab Muskuni. He's telling me that this house right here uh, is, a, is a Palestinian house, and Palestinian family live inside. And that house right there is a uh, is for settlers, Israeli settlers live there. Uh, and uh, just just above my head, there's a camera for uh, security reasons. And right there, also above. so uh, living above, all the houses above us are settlers, settlers' houses, and it's called uh, Beit Hadassah's. Uh, it's called Beit Hadassah's settlement. He's saying right here is uh, is the way that leads to Shara Shuhada and the settlement. We've seen Shara Shuhada with Ashira previously in one of the episodes. Since ninety since, uh, since, the, uh, since ninety four. Since ninety four. This? Yeah, yeah. Are you at oh, this has been closed since ninety four? It was uh, it was gold market. Yeah, it was gold market, but, but yeah. I don't think it's been closed since ninety four. Yeah, after ninety four. Yeah. 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 After, like uh, or the second intifada, I don't know exactly. Mm. Really, but but it's uh, these are all closed or military orders. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. And uh, what is the role of uh, of uh, TPH? Yeah, uh, we have a exactly. civil uh, civil observers mission. Yeah, and we are here to uh, to give a feeling of security to the uh, to the uh, Palestinians. Yes, so this is our mandate. Uh -huh. So we uh, report on on breaches against the uh, uh, agreements on Hebron, okay. and also against uh, human rights mm. uh, law and uh, international humanitarian right. Okay. And we report back to our member countries. We are six member countries mm -hmm. constituting this, this mission. Yeah. And uh, we report back to them and we report back to the parties, the Israeli side and the uh, uh, Palestinian side. Yeah. Okay. And we're here on request of the Palestinian and Israeli And the building side. in front of me is uh, considered one of uh, the Israeli soldiers' buildings? Yeah, this is the Yeshiva school, Beit Romano. Okay. Uh. It's a school? It's a Yeshiva school, yes. It is. Okay. It's a religious school. Yeah. Alright, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Where are you from? You're my walk. I'm from Ramallah. Uh, okay. This is Abbas' son, and uh, the settlers threw uh, chlorine to his eyes, and uh, 
بشوف شيء بسيط هي كان ستيل سي بس هي دازنت سي يعني بيرفكتلي فاين بيكوز اوف ذا كلورين ذا جات انتو هيز ايس هذا بشبه يومي من المستوطنين بلادكم الحجار بلطخوا عنان الخمر والزباله والحجار كلها علينا هون هي سيلينغ مي ذات اولموست افري داي ذي ثرو ستونز امتي بارلز اوف واين اند الكهول اند اند جاربيج اند ذي جاست ثرو ات تو ات هيز هاوس اند هيز نيبرز بلاش الجيش الاسرائيلي اذا بشوفنا بنطلع على السطوح عشان نشوف الخزانات ممنوع بنزلنا من فوق وبيجينا الجيش كله ساعة 2 في الليل بيطلعوا الاولاد وكلهم بيطلعونا برا اذا طلعتوا بالليل على السطوح؟ اه اذا طلعنا طلعنا مثلا في النهار طلعنا نشوف الخزانية اه في نص الليل بيجونا حوالي على الساعة 2 3 الصبح ما بيجوا في لحظتها؟ لا بيجوش في لحظتها آه. بيجوا الساعة 2 الصبح او 3 الصبح آه. بيجوا بيهجموا على الدار 30 40 جندي كلهم مقنعين بخوفوا الاولاد الاولاد بدهم يخافوا فبنعمل الولاد تحت السرير He's telling me that if they go on the top of their house uh, to check out the, the water tanks um, The Israelis, uh, the Israeli soldiers would come in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. and, and scare the little children. This is one of his own stores. Uh, they closed it in 2001. They closed it in 2001. They closed it in 2009 so they could open it. Where did they open it? They opened it in 2005 and then in 2009 they closed it again. هذه الشبابيك طلع كيف كلها ملحة ومسكرة. And those windows have to be always closed right here. And they cannot open them. ليش عشان وراهم في مستوطنين؟ مباشرة فيش بينه بينه صانت فيش. Ah, because behind this wall and those windows are Israeli settlers. And they forced him uh, to close the door and the windows, and they're not uh, allowed to open them. Say hi, Mr. Sultan. Hello. Did you know about the Jordan's Bay Ali? Right here. Uh, just in front of me is uh, little settlers, very little kids. Hi, madras. How much is it? This is a madras for Muslims. They study for Muslims. This is a school for settlers. 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 And they've uh, they've taken it and they've built the other floors on top, the new ones, and now it's an uh, it's a school for Israelis. طب وين 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 ال مش عارفة هاي المحلات هون عرب؟ هذه كلها محلات عرب. هاي بعد الحرم الإبراهيمي. أيوة بعد. بدي أعرف الفرق وين ال وين العرب وين الإسرائيلية مش. هاي ال هاي العرب موقع حالة كله هيك العرب مع البلد القديمة هديك. آه. So that part right there on the left is all for Arabs. هلا هاي المنطقة كلها صارت المستوطنة هذه هلا انت شايف البرج هذاك هذاك آه. بتلف لعند الحرم ابراهيمي هي الحرم ابراهيمي غاب بتضلك لافة على المنطقة هذه كلها مستوطنين من البرج هذاك؟ اه and right there from the top of the mountain all around till this area is the Israeli settlement and that's an Israeli soldier right there أنا بدي أحكي عن مقصير على سبة إنه بدي يبعث لي الجيش عشان نحن طالعين على السطوح. تعال تفرجوا. I don't want to get the guy in trouble. بس هذا زي التلفزيون لا. نورس من أوروبي. زر زر زر. saying that we were not allowed to film. عربي من الشامة. زي حنوت الشامة زي تستلم. عبس خاص خلينا ننزل. إم بعيوت بخلاد. ايش بحكي لك؟ بقول لي ممنوع انه تسحبوا حالكم وتطلع على السطوح ونحن سوى مشاكل و... وانت اجي في الليل اخذكم وتروح على السجن هيك بحكي؟ اه هيز هي واز جاست تيلينج هيم دونت 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 دو تروبلز دونت جو اب ذا روف اند بيكوز وي ويل جيت يو ان تروبلز اند ويل كم تو ذا هاوس ان ذا ميدل اوف ذا نايت اند كير يور كيدز جاست لايك وات هي تولد مي ا وايل اجو وات وي دوينج هير
Oh, you said that there's a settlement on top of us. And yeah, I can tell from the, the fans that uh, Israeli settlers are living uh, up there. Yeah, from this settlement, they call it Abraham Avino settlement. This part? Yes. Uh, and behind the... There's more than one compound. There's more than one in the country. It's not one. Yeah, there's six compounds. Oh, he's telling me that because the different names of the settlements yeah. got me confused. Yeah, you so can he's see telling them on me that there's six here. different compounds. Yeah. And the Rehabil uh, Rehabilitation Committee, they banned this book by Dr. Nazmi Jobe and some engineering. And it shows you here on a map, the sixth settlement. It started from the first one, Tal Romeida settlement. Tal Romeida, that's the, where we're going. It's the Boya or Beit Hadassa. The Boya is uh, where we saw uh, Abed's, uh, Abed's house uh, next to his house. Yeah, Abed Sidr. Oh, Abed the, Sidr, exactly. The third one, Osama School. Uh, this kids. is Osama School, the school and I told you about uh, yeah, that used to be and Palestinians they, and now and it's... And they call uh, it now Beit Romano. Beit Romano, okay. This is the fourth one. It used to be the main vegetable and the fruit market behind us. Mm -hmm. And now they call it Abraham Avino settlement. Okay. This is military area. Is this, is this where uh, the Ibrahimi Mosque is? No, go, going this direction. Okay. This is the Ibrahimi Mosque area number okay. five. And this, this is the biggest settlement, Giryat Arba. And Kuriyat it's all of it written mm. here. Mm. And here you could see some oh. pictures for the settlement. Here is the Boya settlement. Oh, here is Osama. And they call it Beit Romano. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank this is a Palestinian sweet, it's called Raha, and uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's the common way of the old country? Of course, it's a economic and it's a personal I'm asking if, uh, if, if uh, the, the closure of the old city affected uh, this industry of Raha or Halum, how they, uh, how they call it here. And it's my way to tell you made it. So try it. My friend Micha, and, uh, and Micha is uh, one of the breaking silence guys, and he's the one who's going to take me into the tour. I should tell you first off that um, I, I am a founder of Breaking the Silence, but I yes. no longer work there. I'm taking you on a personal tour. Oh, okay. Not the Breaking the Silence okay, tour. Okay, so this is a private. Uh, this is tour. a private, yes. <laughs> Anyways, this is a Brahimi mosque from outside, and uh, they're not allowing us in with the camera. We have to go and get a permit and then we get inside with the camera. And right there on the right is the entrance for uh, Arabs and Muslims. 
And this is a, come on, this is the entrance for Israelis, right? That's the entrance for Jews, yeah. And, uh, so that the guys that are standing up there are Jews, right? Yes. After okay. the, the Goldstein massacre. The massacre in 1994. 94, yeah. It was, it was completely split up. Okay. Uh, that, that was actually quite a big, uh, quite a big event in Hebron history. Not only because oh. a Jew committed a, a terrorist a crime attack, against uh, Muslims, yeah. But the 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 reaction to that, the policy uh, speaking, um, was to the Palestinians. It was a complete closure. That's when the Shuada Street was closed officially. Wow! It wasn't. It was. How, how many? How many Palestinians died in this massacre? I think there were twenty nine. Twenty nine. What was special about it? I mean, with with much respect to the families and to the lost ones, um, what was significant about that was that um, the repercussions were also on Palestinians. Okay. It wasn't that Jews were restricted later on mm. for security reasons. The Palestinians, the restrictions and were the made on Palestinians. And the who committed the, 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 the crime is uh, from Kiryat Arba, a settle, settlement, he's right? Buried, he's buried in Kiryat Arba. For us, what's important to tell, uh, for me, what's important for, Palest to, for Palestinians and Israelis to realize is that uh, no matter who committed the crime, Jew or Palestinian, it was the Palestinians who paid the price for it. That was the day that the Shuadah Street was officially closed. I actually, I actually never thought I'd come back here when I got out of the army. I thought this was the worst place on the planet. I never wanted to get close. And for how many years did you serve in, in, in I was in the army uh, during the second intifada. Mm -hmm. uh, and for a long, for a few months, I think it was seven or eight months here in, in Hebron, in Halil. Uh, and I never ever wanted to come back, but it seemed... Uh, when I got back, or in, in, in around the family, or in Jerusalem, or in Tel Aviv, that people in Israel really don't have a clue what's going on here. Yep. It's not that they're really evil and they want the worst to happen to, to anyone who lives here. It's just that they really just didn't know. Yeah. Especially if you don't know, if you're a new immigrant and you really don't know the... Yeah, somebody told you this man Joe. Yeah, yeah. Like not understanding the geopolitical structure of the whole area. Yeah. Why not? What? Why not? There's a Supreme Court ruling that says that they're allowed to go through. That's, that's not a legal order. What? The, I, have, I have my commanders that tell me there is not a proof. That it's, uh, it's not, you cannot picture here. And also, uh, you're from Ramallah, right? right? Mm -hmm. You're a Muslim? Yes, I am. Okay. Muslim cannot go in this side. Why? This is the order. Jews don't go this side. Muslims don't go, don't, don't go this but side. But I'm also half Christian. That's Why does also, it matter? Also because of your view from So Ramallah. it's a discrimination of religion now? Yes. You if I'm a Muslim, I can't go into this area. If you're Muslim or Arabic, you can go this area. If but you're I'm Bulgarian. Jew, if you're I am Jew, Bulgarian. I have a Bulgarian passport. Can I use that passport to go Jew, inside? You want to listen to me or not? I'm asking you a question. Okay. I'm telling you my, my orders. If there's a problem with the orders, you can, I don't know, write a letter to the government or something. I got Which my government? orders. Which government? Your government? Yes. As if they would listen. I have, all, I have orders. I need to fill them. You can go to this side. I'm sorry. Okay. And do you do you walk this area? No. Nope. Do you yourself go inside? Ah, myself, yes. Yes? Why? Yes. You're a Jew? Yeah, but I'm a soldier. Takshiv, three people from Ramallah are Arabs and Muslims. No? I talk to the... Over there I can. Yes. And over there? Over there, yes. It's only this area. It's only 200 of okay, so place. And what, what, is the, what is there? This is the Jewish side. To the, to the cave. Oh, so I'm not allowed in because it's the entrance to the Ibrahimi yes. Mosque? Yes. For the Jew side? Okay. Yes. You can sit in Abed Place. There's or no problem. You can go that way. You can go that way. Thanks. This is the latest development uh, to keep Palestinians and Jews separate. What, this? This is the Palestinians are supposed to be on that side of the You're wall, kidding, the Jews right? are on this side of the wall. This little thing. That's what that's that's what it's about, yeah. Palestinians cannot actually walk here. Not allowed to walk. Oh, oh my god. Not allowed to walk here. All these used to be open shops. 
And they've, they've closed them what year? Uh, 2004, 5, 6, during the second intifada. Okay. Um, what year did you serve? Uh, you told me. 4, 5, 6, during the second intifada. Also. <laughs> So it was close. Yeah, you witnessed you witnessed this area when it was open. Yes. And when it was and closed. And slowly as it was closing closed. down. Yes. Okay. See, I used to be that guy. You used to be that guy. I was. I was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks God, uh, not anymore. <laughs> what made you change your mind? It seemed. Um, for one, I didn't, I didn't know what uh, we were getting into. When we're 18, I'd never, since my family would never drive through the occupied territories, Okay. they figured it was Palestinian. Mm -hmm. I never knew what was going on. The first time I came here was as a soldier. And you lived in Jerusalem, right? Yes, I grew up okay. in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I, you know, growing up, I never knew what, I'd never visited Halil. Yes. Um, and as far as I was concerned, I was very proud to serve my country. Uh, and over time here, uh, we learned what was going on. We okay. learned what, what was actually happening around here. Um, and when we got here, well, things were still open. They were it, wasn't it didn't look like this. Okay. The Kasbah was open. The gates to the Kasbah were open. There were people in the streets. Mm. Um, donkeys, goats, meat market, vegetable market. Yeah, everything this place was, was alive. Yes. Kind of the way... Um, you know, the Ramallah Souk is alive. Yeah, yeah. Is there any Palestinians living in those buildings So, uh, Yeah, as you can see, there's still Palestinians living up on the rooftops, on the, on the, on the higher the, on above the, the ground. Yeah. yeah. Um, they and have a really hard here. time. Probably, probably this doesn't, is empty. Doesn't look like it. There are a lot that are empty. When we were here, originally this area had about 30,000 Palestinians living in it. People need to, you know, for the numbers, there are about six or 700 Jews. Israelis living in the in the settlements um, and Hebron Halil has about 160 170 thousand Palestinians in mm. this district uh, there are about 30,000 originally about 30,000 Palestinians and I think maybe about 15,000 and why did they actually close the street if it's in the middle of uh, of Palestinian houses the Shuada street it's the main street that the settlements uh, uses okay the the, the but you just saw the, the public bus, the Egged bus, going mm. through here. Okay. The first time I was here was a Saturday morning. The first post, the first time I'd ever reached uh, Halil. And I think I was posted over there and we heard a ruckus coming from, uh, from over there. All these, all these uh, uh, shops, well, most of these shops were, were open and the Kasba was open. And I run over because our orders were very, very clear. We're here to keep the peace. That's what the soldiers' orders are. Okay. Doesn't matter what the you know what it needs to happen. We're here to keep the peace. The order. It's not a matter of uh, a, a racism or not. It's the, as far as the soldier is concerned, he needs to keep it quiet. Okay. Um, those are the orders. The other order that was very clear is we're not allowed to ever touch women, especially not the women from the settlements from the settlement. You're not allowed to touch the settlement women, the Israelis? Yes, not allowed to touch Palestinian women either. Okay. Uh, and I run over here because I hear some shouting. And it turns out that these four large women came out of the settlement, Jewish settlement. One of them was holding a baby, one of them was pregnant, another had a uh, rolling pin in her, in her, hand, in her arm. And they were, they, were, they were around here in these shops that were back then, they were open, the flowers and everything here wasn't like this. Mm -hmm. And they were shoving things off the shelves and smacking Palestinian shopkeepers and just making a mess. Mm. And they knew that I wasn't allowed to touch them and, the, and, and, and I okay. wanted to, I needed to quiet things down. So we started chasing each other around this and area. They continue to do whatever they and doing. they continue to do whatever they want. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. And I get in between her, the, this lady and the Palestinian shopkeeper and she's smacking at him and she's hitting me. And I'm yelling at her, lady, keep, cut it out. And she's yelling at me to get out of the way. And, and we run around in circles like that. Now everybody realizes the position that we're in because she knows that I'm not allowed to touch her. I know that I'm not allowed to touch her. The Palestinian shopkeeper also knows that if he tries to hit her back and protect himself... You are allowed to touch him. I'm supposed to either turn around and shoot him or 
or at least handcuff him and blindfold him and arrest him on the place. So he has, he's completely um, helpless. And going back home, visiting home when we came back from the army and realizing that nobody really knows what's going on here. Yeah. And uh, people don't want to hear about it. People in Israel don't want to talk about the, you know, the price of the occupation, what's really actually going on here. Uh, and kind of qu kept quiet through the service. And when we, when we got out of uh, the army, it was clear that that we're going to continue our service because people in Israel need to know, and that was the, what was that was what the the what? task was going to be. Okay, that's why you co-founded Breaking the Silence. Yeah, yeah. And how many uh, ex-Israeli soldiers are are in it now? So far, hundreds of soldiers have given testimonies. Hundreds okay. of soldiers that served in Halil, um, around Nablus. Uh, lately, uh, lots of soldiers have given testimony about cast lead in Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's, it's grown since 2004, obviously. So maybe the Israeli soldiers uh, standing behind you one day will give his testimony? Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. So should we continue going up? Or maybe, maybe he'll read enough testimonies in time to decide to... To, to refuse to serve in the army even before he has to be a good Maybe. testament. Maybe. Maybe. And uh, when you see a soldier still holding a gun, do you think of a sentence that you would like to tell him or her? You know, I was arrested here a couple of weeks ago for... Um, <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, for protesting. Uh, right now, the, now that everything is closed, every Saturday the settlement, the settlers um, have an arranged tour around inside the Kasbah. Yeah. Um, and Youth Against Settlements, a Palestinian organization, yeah. uh, had invited a bunch of Israelis to, to come and protest with them. With them. And we, I joined with a bunch of my we friends. You got arrested. I, well, the, the idea was to say, I think finally there's a group of Palestinians saying, okay, enough. We're not doing that, along with some with Israeli friends, and that's that's what we joined. That's what we came to do. Um, and it, it is it is very, it's very strange uh, to come back and, and and I mean this is the these guys are the same unit that I was. They came from the same mm. you know the same households that I grew up in, same youth movements that I grew up in. Yeah, no no no. I don't want you to tell the sentence to him. <laughs> oh, that okay. to me. <laughs> if you have anything in mind. Uh, that it's okay, that there are enough Israelis that would be supportive and give a big hug and a pat on the back if he chose to refuse to serve here. I didn't know that when I was here. The term refusing wasn't really uh, used as much back then, before the Second Intifada. Uh, not to me, I hadn't heard it as much at least. I never had an Israeli show up at my post and tell me you know, I've been here, I know what it's like, I've been at this post, I know what's going on here. You don't have to do this. What would happen in the middle of the night, as we were, say, while we were soldiers, we'd hear banging in the middle of the night, as there was, mm. say, there was a curfew. Okay. Um, and we'd hear banging with a big, you know, big hammers. And mm -hmm. we'd run over to see what was going on. And it turned out that there were a bunch of settlers um, knocking down walls. Uh, since if you, if you can tell, the settlement is built right on top of the Kasbah. Yes, it's yes, It's right yeah. on top of the, yeah, of the, of the shops. we saw that earlier on the way. Walking through the Kasbah, you totally notice it. Yeah. And we'd hear banging. And we'd, and we'd find out that they were slowly knocking a hole into the wall. Mm. Um, and, and we'd shoo them away and say, you're not allowed to do that, it's illegal, we'd have to continue on our duties with the patrol. Yeah. And after about a couple of hours, we'd hear the banging again. Mm. And we'd run back and we'd stop them again, but eventually a hole was knocked in the wall. And the hole was knocked into the wall of a, of a Palestinian shop. And, and they'd, they'd lock the Palestinian shop from the inside, pull the merchandise out of the hole, mm. uh, make a nice little house of it, and put a new... A settler couple inside. Wow. 
And this, this just happens really slowly and really gradually, but that's, that's how slowly the settlement expands. And there's a lot of power, there's a lot of power to the soldiers. The 18 year olds, you give them an M16, and they're the king of the world. I didn't get to meet the sweet guy you were talking about. I met uh, one of the worst soldiers and got sexually harassed on a checkpoint. Worst experience of my life. Oh. نحن نجينا عن جال الكارنتين. هلا أنت ممنوع تمشي على هذا. ممنوع. ممنوع. أنا واقف هون أنت واقف هون أنت ممنوع تمشي. ممنوع. بس نزلت بطخوني. هذا اللي بينزلوا هوني بس عم بحطوه في مقبرة الشهداء. إيش مجال يعني؟ مخ. يعني هذا الشارع محرم إنا وش محرم عليه. Oh. He's saying that uh, if he walks on the street, he'll be shot. I'm telling him I'm here and you're here and you can't walk on the street. And he's like. Uh, if I go down to the street, I'll be shot. <laughs> to go and um, pray at the Ibrahimi mosque, he needs a permission. <laughs> and uh, the settlers are walking behind me. They're allowed to walk on the street and Palestinians are not. <laughs> What we realized at some point is people in Israel don't uh, don't understand and don't realize quickly what's going on here. Mm. Um, the same thing will start happening in Al Quds in Jerusalem. Mm. And now, 2010 years later, five six years later, this is exactly what's going on in Jerusalem these days. It's exactly what's going on in Sheikh Sharach. It's exactly yeah. what's going on in Silwan, sure. in Shuafat. What you don't notice, it, what you might notice in all of the paintings I is... I don't see any Arabs. There are no pa Arabs. There are no Palestinians in any of the paintings. As far as the settlers are concerned, there are no Palestinians involved here. They we are the exist. only ones. They are the only ones with the right to the land. They are the only ones with the right to live here. I Palestinian city. No, no. It's Jews, called Hebron. Jews lived here. <laughs> Not Kiryat Arba. I don't know what. Do other you know you the have. Jews lived here thousands of years before the Arabs appeared here? No. Ah, that's the fact. Jews lived. Hebron was a Jewish city. I don't thousands hear. of years. Those are Palestinian no. houses. Palestinians Never mind. lived here. They can live here. They but can why? Live here? Ask your government why, and why the Jews, Why Jews are not allowed to 97% of the town? Why Jews are allowed to only 3% of the town? Tell me that. Answer me that. Jews Why? are in one street. So because of this Palestinian government is a Nazi government. They it's a Nazi government. You course, call my government a Nazi course, government? Of course, because, because they are and against... And government that kills millions and thousands <laughs> in people, of, of people in Gaza is oh, not a Nazi come government. On, let come me on. ask you why. I, I wanted to visit... Today is the 11th of May. In four, day, in four days, do you know what that what day is that? We're going to celebrate the independence of the state of Israel. He's going to celebrate the independence. And I'm going to remember the thousands of Palestinians who died because something that's called Nekpe, the Palestinian catastrophe. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because this country was belonging and is belonging to the Jewish people. Yes, the, this is a Jewish country. Thousands of years, this is the Jewish homeland. It's the Palestinians Jew then. Never. Okay, you have your own point of view. No, I have but, my own point of view. But it's an historical... Of your life, my dear, it's historical life. fact. I live my own life. It's I get harassed on checkpoints. Okay. It's historical okay. fact. Okay. You see okay. who was denied here in the checkpoint. Not you, it was yeah, me. Yeah, right, make a scene now. Anyways, thank you very much it for your me. conversation. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. And thank you very much for filming this. Hello.